Hey guys, Stockett here, and I thought I'd do another one of my game dev updates. Uh, the last one's been messing around with Blender, since then we've done donut tutorials, and I was mostly just sticking to Blender, and I was quite afraid of Unity, because I've never done anything with C Sharp before. So I've now forced myself to mess around in Unity, and what you're seeing is basically just what I've done in the last 24 hours. Um, I made a terrible platformer, but it is a platformer, so I, I can now call myself a game dev because I've successfully made a game. I then wrote a script for uh, first person character controls, and then I messed around with some environment stuff um, from the asset store. So it was basically like, do a basic my first platformer, I'll learn how to write a character controller, I'll learn how to use assets to make a terrain. Um, so now that I've done that, I can now hopefully try and make slightly more ambitious projects, which are still very basic. Uh, the next thing I want to try and learn how to do is learn how to do combat. Um, and I want to ideally do a first person melee combat in an enclosed space. I'm thinking of just making like a little coliseum because that makes sense in my head because even my terrible, like learning how to code projects need to make sense in my head. And you could have kind of like a endless horde wave mode sort of game where you're in a Colosseum, you kill everyone in the Colosseum, more people enter the Colosseum. If you die, you start again, but it, it makes sense. So anyway, let, let me now show you my amazing platformer in action. Boom. We can move. We can jump. And if you fail, you collect a super jump. Woohoo! And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the game. <laughs> so it's not going to be replacing Mario anytime soon, but this is mostly just a case of um, trying to get over the initial fit, oh, get over the initial fears of um, Unity and C Sharp, dragging myself away from Blender and just following the tutorials. This was the first tutorial we did uh, start to finish. Do, 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 do. Boo, 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 boo. I can't do any more of that. We'll get demonetized. Big old jump. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the premise. There's a start platform, there's an end platform, and you uh, try to get to the other end. And then I made a, uh, just a, uh, this jump is a bit tricky. I just made a flat uh, level so that if you fail, you can run back very slowly, walk of shame uh, to the start again. And uh, yeah, that's the entirety, <laughs> That that is the game. Um, but what did we learn from this? So from this, I had to learn how to do um, basic uh, character movement, uh, moving left to right, obviously. We had to learn how to do jumping. I then also had to learn how to limit jumping because I didn't know this, but when you first make a like jump from scratch, this one's a bit clutch. Oh, um, there's no limiters on the amount of times that you can jump. So you end up just endlessly jumping, like jumping in the air, which is actually quite fun. And it also makes me realize just how easy Flappy Bird must have been to make. Um, cause you didn't need to set like any limiters or anything. So I actually had to write extra code to limit the amount of times that I could jump. And then from that, that's how we made the collectible thing, which if you collect, you then get the super jump. Oh, we're nearly doing it. Oof, can we do it? Are we world first gamers? Oh, oh, yes. And then we can jump to our deaths. Whee. We did it. Game complete. Oh, and also I had to learn how to lock the camera um, to the player object. So yeah, so that was, that was the first project. Project one. Project two was this one. Um, this was me following a basic tutorial to learn how to make first person controls. So you can see we can move. We can look up and down. And we can walk. I can't actually jump in this one um, because the tutorial that I was following um, didn't add that. <laughs> it didn't have jumping in this one. And then I tried copying over my jump script um, from the previous one into this and th it didn't like that. So um, at some point I'm going to have to learn how to do a complete start to finish um, player controller, preferably without following a tutorial. Because one of the issues that I've had, and I'm sure that you know, people can relate to this, is when you just when you just spam follow tutorials, but you don't actually like practice by yourself, you end up not really learning. You're just duplicating, um, and that's a problem. So now what I'm doing with any tutorials that I'm following 
is I'm purposely going off script. I was doing this with the blender ones quite a lot. Like if they went one material, I go different and I'd always like pitch my own colors and lighting and stuff. Um, and then I'm trying to, like if I do a tutorial on movement, then afterwards try and write a fresh one in a different scenario. So that's something I'm trying to force myself to do with Unity now. I'm still absolutely terrible at Blender, but like I feel like I was using better learning practices with Blender and then I got lazy with my uni tutorials and was just copying them blindly and not really taking it in as much. Um, but yeah, anyway, but we successfully made, you know, camera controls. Cool, and basic movement. So that was that game. Uh, that is the game. <laughs> that, so that was my second game, moving on a flat plane. Um, and then technically my third game, because, you know, this is a genre, walking sim. Um, I wanted to learn how to use basic assets. Um, so we went to the asset store and we imported a bunch of assets. And as you can see, made a beautiful terrain. And we made some basic mountains. And we didn't actually need all these extra cubes. And one thing which is kind of neat about Unity is uh, it will actually purposely save your computer from burning by removing and adding levels of details the closer you are. Um, so I've been wanting to work towards this big open world goblin thing, but I realized that was the whole goblin sitting boots of battles. So that was actually too ambitious, which is why I've stripped it back to just learn how to do combat in an enclosed circle. But one of the things that I found very interesting about my goblin idea was uh perspective and heights because in most video games um you just have a set like normal human perspective and everything's the same um it's quite rare that you have something where like your character is significantly tall or significantly smaller and it plays part of the narrative um and i was like well it'd be cool being a goblin in like a world not made for goblins because you'd be really short and i was like well when i make this what if we tried making just really tall grass so this is what happens when you just make really tall grass. Hang on. Light up the player. Wee. Boom. Yeah, it kind of actually gives you like Pokemon vibes. I kind of dig it. Obviously, this this is pretty ugly assets just if I yoink off the store. But if you just make really tall grass, then uh You don't really see much. <laughs> you, you can't see the forest for the trees, because there's grass in the way. But like, as scuffed as it is, I actually kind of really dig it. I think with grass that wasn't, like, as densely packed, um, where you could kind of see through it, you could do some really cool things. We have some, like, wheat field vibes. I don't know. I actually really, really like the really tall grass. Um, but yeah, so this was just a case of learning how to import assets into Unity. I will ideally only ever use my own assets that I've made myself in Blender. Um, but when it comes to learning the absolute basics, it's obviously much easier for me to just import a bunch of assets. Um, because to make this would otherwise require me making my own textures, uh, making my own grass, rigging it, animating it. The same with the trees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a lot of work. Um, and when I'm just trying to learn the basics, then obviously it's much easier to just kind of start small and then get more ambitious with time. So hopefully the next update I'll have, depending on how long away the next update is, but assume I do the next update, you know, sometime soon. Uh, hopefully I'll have worked out how to do basic combat systems and my idea is for this Colosseum thing just to expand it a bit. Um, I've been playing a lot of Dark Messiah, and I've been playing a lot of Vermintide, and I was actually realizing that there are very few games that do first-person melee. Um, a lot of games just, it ends up feeling really floaty. Um, like Skyrim's a good example, that had terrible melee combat. So I don't know if it's a case of just like the limitations um, and the fact that most first most games that feature first-person melee aren't combat-focused games. They're like these massive, sprawling, immersive sims. And then the combat just was kind of tacked on. Um, whereas I would ideally be making a combat game. So yeah, the, the goal is to try and make some kind of small enclosed arena, coliseum, whatever you want to call it. Have a door where enemies would spawn in from. And it would just be like an endless horde with just waves. You defeat one wave, new wave spawns. And you keep going until you die. That That's basically what I'm trying to work towards. Um, there'll be one... Uh, weapon it will be a spear because spears are sick and not enough games use spears 
Ideally, I'll have some form of ragdolling so that if you jab them in the leg with the spear, they'll buckle. Um, because again, I was thinking about this whole like goblin thing. Goblins are short. What would be the best weapon for a goblin to use? A spear, because they they don't have good reach. They wouldn't use daggers. They're not strong enough to use bows. And just a pet peeve for games in general. Uh, bows shouldn't be a dexterity weapon. They should be a strength weapon because you actually need to be really strong to pull back the full length of a bow. Um, but anyway, so, sorry. Um, so this is a walk working towards my final like goblin game. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and have this Colosseum thing. You're shorter than your opponents. Ideally, we have some kind of physics ragdolling. Um, and yeah, if you jab them in the leg, they buckle. You can then jab them in the head. Um, and maybe I'll try and make a push um, and have a pit. And then you can push them into the pit. Because if anyone's played Dark Messiah... The best thing about the game is just kicking people off ledges. Um, and one thing which I think would be quite funny, um, since I probably won't know how to like dispose of bodies, because I, I won't be very good because I'm terrible at coding, um, I kind of like the idea of me just eventually filling a pit with so many enemies that then start crawling back out of it. Um, but yeah, that is my Unity update Taki devlog video. Um, hopefully I'll keep these coming and hopefully I'll maybe... Uh, Hopefully I'll be able to continue messing around and learning uh, Unity and Blender without getting too distracted by the new PoE League because this is a lot of fun. Because learning is fun. But yes, I'm Taki. Have a good day. Let me know if you've got any good tutorials for me to follow, by the way. Bye-bye.